everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to show you how to make a very popular sweet treat, lollipop holders. <laughs> so when giving out gifts in bulk, it's hard to come up with something that everyone will like that doesn't break the bank, right? That's why I think these lollipop holders are so popular. They're also super cute. You can make them for almost any occasion, add all sorts of confections, and everybody loves them, seriously. Now, we did figure out that there is one lollipop in particular that people especially love to put in these. I promise to share all of the sweet details later in this video, so you'll want to stick around for that. <laughs> so right now, let's head on over to my craft table, and we will get started making these lollipop holders. <music> Here's all the tools and materials that we're going to use for our lollipop holders. Not too much, right? You'll want to start with some good quality cardstock. I'm using 65 pound cardstock, but you could use something a little stronger if you want them to be more sturdy. 65 pound cardstock worked great for these designs, however. You'll also want some good craft glue. It is one of the best tips I can give you. I'm using this precision craft glue, which works like a charm. I love it. And I'm also gonna use my Cricut cutting machine to cut my cardstock. This is the Cricut Maker 3, but you could use just about any cutting machine. The Explore also works, and some of them will also cut right on the joy. You can, of course, use a craft knife if you don't have a cutting machine, but the Cricut makes it really easy. If you do use a Cricut, you'll want either a blue light grip or green standard grip cutting mat, and you'll also want a brayer, a scraper, a spatula, and some tweezers. Now a scoring tool, whether you use a stylus or a wheel, is entirely optional. Use it or not, it's up to you. I've created design variations for both scoring and no scoring so everyone can make these lollipop holders. And oh yes, I'm gonna show one of my favorite cutting tips that will save you lots of time and materials. I'm super excited to teach it to you. So let me show you where to get the free lollipop holder design files, and then I'll show you how to cut them on the Cricut and put them all together. Step one, get my free lollipop holder designs. First, go to jennifermaker.com 379 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find a design by searching the page for design number 379 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. Let me show you how to cut this design on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to do this, Go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. When you view the SVG folder, you will see both versions of the design. Click the one that you want. I'm going to go with the no scores version for this tutorial. Here's what all of my lollipop holder designs look like in Cricut Design Space. You may need to zoom out to see everything. Just click on the minus sign on the lower left to do this. I've included four designs, a cute unicorn, a baby chick, a present, and a butterfly. There's something for every occasion. And I have even more lollipop and candy holder designs in my free resource library. Just search for design number 350. Step two, prepare your design for cutting. In this tutorial, I will show you how to put together the unicorn candy holder. The steps are basically the same for all four designs, and I will point out any differences at the end. For now, let's remove the other three designs from my canvas. First, separate the designs by clicking on Ungroup at the top of the Layers panel on the far right. Now we'll click and drag a bounding box over the unicorn design and move it to the side like this. Then select the other designs and click the X circle at the top left of the bounding box to delete them. Our canvas just has the unicorn design on it now, so we can focus on this cute candy holder. Now the no score version of the design that I uploaded has small dashed cut lines instead of score lines. You can see these just under the hoofs here. I did it this way so you didn't have to use a scoring stylus or tool with this version of the design. But the dashed lines will help you still fold your cardstock later on. 
And don't worry, the dashed cut lines are super small, so the cardstock will bend just right without separating or detaching. We're almost ready to start cutting, but I have a great time-saving tip to show you when we prepare mats. Make sure you have the right machine selected and click Make It. If a window pops up asking you how you'll load your materials, Design Space is checking if you're using smart materials or not. For this project, we're using normal cardstock, so click On Mat and then click Continue. This is our prepare screen. If you see seven mats, that's great. Technically, you're ready to proceed, but remember that time-saving tip I mentioned? Here's a tip. Did you know that you can combine your cuts into fewer mats for your Cricut? Even if the objects need different colors, it's a great way to decrease your cutting time and use up small pieces of material. I'll show you how by moving the cuts on mats 5, 6, and 7 to mat 4. First, note the colors that you want to use for each set of objects on these mats. You'll be cutting cardstock in the correct colors and placing them strategically on a machine mat in a few minutes. Select mat 5, which has a small flower on it. Click the three dots to the upper left of it and choose Move Object. A pop-up window will appear displaying thumbnails of your mats. You can see that we're moving an object from the yellow mat because it is lighter than the other mats and it says Current below the thumbnail. Click on mat 4, which is orange on my screen, and hit Confirm. Your view will switch to mat 4 with the object you just moved from mat 5 added to it. Now the moved object appears in the same spot it had on its previous mat. Drag the moved piece to the top right corner of the mat. Repeat the process for the objects on mat 6, placing them in the bottom left corner of mat 4. and then move the objects from mat 7 to the lower right corner of mat 4. Now your mat 4 should look similar to mine, with four groups of objects in its four corners. So now instead of seven mats, you only have four mats to handle. And since mat 4 will now need four small pieces of cardstock instead of one piece of a single color, we need to prepare it strategically. So using the measurement grid on your screen, figure out how large of a piece of cardstock you need and in which color you're going to need to cover each corner group. Then cut your materials to size. For example, I'll cut a piece of teal cardstock about two and a half inches by four and a half inches and place it in the bottom left corner of my machine mat when I'm ready to load mat four. I hope you'll try this trick and let me know how it goes. Click back to mat one to make sure everything still looks good and then click continue to load the make screen. Under set base material, select medium cardstock. If you're using a different cardstock type, select the right item for your project. And I almost always change pressure to more for clean cuts, especially with cardstock projects like this one. And if you're using the same cardstock for each mat like I am, click Remember Material Settings so you don't need to adjust everything after each mat. Every shortcut saves some time. Step three, cut your lollipop holder design. All right, it's time to load your Cricut. Place the first mat's cardstock on a blue light grip mat or a green standard grip machine mat. Use a brayer to adhere it well. And load your mat. And press the flashing button to begin. Thank you. 
once the mat is finished, unload it, flip it over onto your workspace and gently roll back a corner to release the cardstock. Removing the machine mat from the cardstock like this helps you keep the paper flatter so there's less risk of curling or tearing. Notice the little cut to the bottom of the piece with the hole for the lollipop stick. That's where we'll fold the cardstock when we put it all together. Complete the process for the rest of the materials, making sure to prep mat for and its multiple colors correctly. Since the Cricut thinks you're cutting all of the pieces from one piece of paper, it will complete all the cuts without stopping. Tricking the machine into doing this saves you a lot of time and even material. And if you have any issues getting nice, clean cuts on some of these intricate things, definitely check out my tutorial on how to create clean, intricate cuts at jennifermaker.com slash intricate cuts. Step four, assemble your unicorn lollipop holder. All of these lollipop holder designs are super easy to put together. All they take is some glue and some tweezers. I'm using my favorite glue for this project, Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. It's perfect for putting together lots of small pieces like these. Let's start with the unicorn's front piece. Find and fold along the little cut lines on the bottom tab to the back so it creates a flat section and small tab parallel to the front. Next, take the black headpiece and add glue to the back side, avoiding the top and side edges of the ears. Place the black piece on the back of the front white shape using the bumps at the top of the head to line them up. When you look at the holder from the front, you'll be able to see the black peeking out around the white ears. Line up and glue the white headpiece on top of the front. First, add a bit of glue to the back of the horn and line it up with the same shape on the white front piece. Then glue the smaller flowers just under the ears. Next come the inner ear pieces. Add a bit of glue to the back of each pink ear piece and line up the bottom curves with the top of its small flower. Align and then glue the large flower so that its top petal matches the bump under the horn. The last flower will overlap with the horn and smaller flowers, but a bit of white will still show between it and the ears. Our unicorn headpiece is done. Next, we'll add the eyelashes. I like to place them at an, at an angle under the flowers, but you can play with their placement. I use tweezers to hold my lashes while I added just a tiny bit of glue to the back. It's almost like adding glue to false lashes. Then place them one at a time on the unicorn's sleepy face. Isn't that just so pretty? Let's add the teal pieces to the hoofs and we're almost done. Glue the oval teal pieces to the center of each back hoof. Since a unicorn is sitting down, they're the ones to the sides. Then glue the crescent shaped front hoofs to the matching curves at the bottom of the body.
Finally, add a little glue to the back of the tab piece that we folded earlier and attach the back piece of the unicorn. Hold that in place to make sure it's dry. And that's it for the unicorn. And like I mentioned earlier, you can follow the same basic steps for the other lollipop holder designs. Always make sure you have your pieces in the right sequence and layout. My cute baby chick has a few details that are a bit different from the others. The beak and the eyes. The eyes are actually made up of three layers of cardstock. I used black, blue, and white in that order, with the black layer being at the bottom. I designed these layers as hearts so they would line up really easily, but since they're partially covered, you will only see them as circles in the final project. Once they're glued together, place them behind the cutout eyes to line them up and glue them in place. Also, I designed the beak to be three-dimensional. There are little cutout pieces or perforations along each side to achieve more depth. Once you've cut out all the pieces, bend the beak a little down the middle Add a tiny bit of glue to each side and then glue them on the back of the headpiece with the beak poking out through the front. Once it's all in place and dry, you can give the beak some more shape. And finally, a tip for my pretty butterfly design. Before you glue the pieces together, I found that it helps to poke a lollipop stick through the slits on the front. That gives the paper a little lift and shape. Then put glue on the back of the head and body and attach it to the back piece. And now she's ready to fly. Didn't these just turn out so, so cute? I love them. Now just add your favorite lollipop and this sweet little gift is ready to give. Now we noticed in our Facebook groups that the most popular lollipop is the original gourmet brand. It's available at various retailers, including the Dollar Tree. We found them online and you can get them for about $60 for 120 or just 50 cents a piece. Links are below the video if you're having any problems finding these lollipops. To put the lollipop in, just slide the stick into the small hole at the bottom and then put a bit of glue on at the very top to hold it closed. Now you just let that dry and you are ready to go. Easy peasy. If you've got any questions, I've got the answers. Ask me whatever you want about lollipop holders, other paper crafts, pretty much anything craft related. Just leave your question below this video or ask over in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I cannot wait to see your lollipop holders. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.